Hi, I'm Vicki Boykis, a senior data scientist and engineer. Welcome to Object Oriented Programming, or OOP, in Python. In this course, we'll take apart the pandas data frame to see how NumPy arrays work. We'll do this to better understand the building blocks of Python objects and classes, and by the end, be able to build our own classes as well. Let's get started. Have you ever heard the saying, it's turtles all the way down? The saying comes from a myth that the world rests on the back of a turtle, which itself sits on the large turtle, which itself sits on an even larger turtle, and so on to infinity. Scientific programming is like that too. All of the high-level packages we use as part of scientific computing in Python, including NumPy, Pandas, and Scikit-Learn, are all based on the foundation, which builds into the complex libraries we use. If you start with Pandas and work your way all the way to the bottom of the stack, you'll find NumPy arrays, which are being used to make a number of other different things. In this course, we'll get to the bottom of the turtles and figure out what the largest turtle, the Python object, really is. So what is object-oriented programming? OOP, as it's otherwise known, is a way to make logical groups of variables and functions reusable for generalized tasks. Think of a recipe when you're cooking. You work from a very specific list of ingredients, in a very specific order, to create a dish as you can see in the picture on the upper left. This is OOP. Not everything we do in Python has to be object-oriented, but sometimes we don't know what we'll need ahead of time. We'll plan and write functions and variables as we go, as you can see in the picture on the lower left. We refer to this style of writing out functions and variables as imperative programming. Either way, we make something delicious, the program on the right-hand side. What do imperative and OOP styles respectively look like? You may be used to writing code that looks like the code in the first example. Here, we have a list of numbers as a variable, r underscore list, and we print each item in that list from a function. For small volumes of data, this works really well. But what if that list was part of another function, or we need to call it and put new values in over and over again? That's the basis of object-oriented programming. In the second example, we create a class, which is a template or a recipe, that takes in a list of numbers and prints all the numbers in the list. We instantiate it with the print list call in the next to last line, and then call the print underscore list method of that class instance or object. How can we bridge these two concepts? Let's start at the bottom of the turtle. Everything in Python is an object, and the most powerful Python libraries we use every day include objects as building blocks. A variable is a Python object. A list is a Python object that's built out of variables. Here, we have a variable for that then becomes part of a list, 1, 2, 4. A list is an advanced type of object with advanced logic for how to access elements. At the second tier, we have NumPy arrays, which are structured as lists of lists. We'll learn more about those in the next section. You can see that we took our list, 1, 2, 4, and added another list to create an array, or list of lists. Finally, at the third tier, we have pandas data frames, which are, in turn, built from NumPy arrays. In this course, we'll cover how to go from basic Python building blocks, like functions and variables, all the way to making our own version of a pandas data frame that we call a data shell in order to create more reproducible computing structures, and we'll do so with lots of analogies to explain the world of OOP. Let's get started.